Jesus said in John 17, Father, make them one as you and I are one so that the world may know that you sent me. Yeah. And the body of Christ, whether you've been hurt, whether you've gone through things, whether whether you're the one hurting, I mean, I, I don't I don't know. But the body of Christ is is God's plan A, and He has no plan B. Yeah, it is in in every sense the how we love each other, how our how we are unified in community, is how the world will know that Jesus was sent by the Lord. Yeah, church in Jesus. <laughs> Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. How's your weekend? It's been wonderful. Really? Yeah. Yeah, really. Why? Um, well, we Sabbathed. We, we Sabbathed Sabbath so good. We Sabbathed so good. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. No, it was a good Sabbath. It was very restful. I think the only thing that made the weekend a little bit of a downer is missing some of our kids. Yeah, we didn't have our, our four bigs. That was a bummer. It is always a bummer. But other than that really big missing piece, it was a good weekend. Very yeah. restful, very delightful. Yeah, yeah, good way to put that. Yeah. Welcome back to Chasing Jesus. My name's Taylor. This is Jordan. And uh, we just really want to see the people of God become all that they were intended to be in Christ. To yeah. know who you are and to be conformed into the image of the Son. Right, and to live out what Jesus had in mind when he said that he came to give life and life more abundantly. Yeah, and this is water, nothing more, oh, nothing I can't less. believe you brought a red solo cup. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about it until I'm on camera and I'm like, man, I bet that looks bad. Not, you know for, a, I'm just, not for a homeschooler. Nope, not for a homeschooler. <laughs> Never had one of these in my life, actually, with the different substance in it. <laughs> so cheers to that. Mm. So we've been kind of going through on the podcast these spiritual practices, right? Yep, from Practice in the Way. From John Mark Calmer. Mm-hmm. He's welcome for all the shameless plugs. Yep, hardcore plugs, And sir. all the people that we've sent that way. Mm-hmm. Um, not like all the way out to the West Coast, but to his book and yeah. his practices. Yeah, we've sent... Um, I mean, our our community, as best we could, to that book because it's been it's been life changing. There there are times you come across certain books in your life where it's it's not as powerful as the Bible by any means, right? But it is a powerful read that points you to things of Scripture that are good and godly. Yeah, yeah, and it's just these things that, like, when we were reading it, everything inside of us was like, "Yes, this is so good." Yep. And the premise of the book is be with Jesus, become like him, do as he did. And yep. so these nine like spiritual practices, disciplines, habits, whatever you want to call them, make up a rule of life. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're all things that Jesus implemented. Yep. So we've started trying to implement them, some better than others. Mm-hmm. But we've gone over several here on the podcast. Yep. Um, and then this past Thursday, actually, um, Corey, that was on the podcast with you in the past, let's plug yep. that episode like right here. Yep. Yeah. Um, so Corey actually shared with the group this mm-hmm. past Thursday. He taught on the practice of community. Community, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Corey. I love his heart, um, uh, what what he's walked through, what he continues to walk through, and he doesn't lose faith. He just continues to, to hunker down into the Lord and and how special of a brother he is. But we we've been talking more recently about community. Mm-hmm. And part of Sabbath last night was to uh, engage in our community. Two um, nights ago. Two, I'm sorry, two nights ago, yeah. yeah. So we did a Sabbath meal with a Brazilian family. Which was the coolest thing. Yeah, they were Shout out wonderful. to our Brazilian friends. Yep. We love you guys, and we loved our Sabbath dinner with y'all. Yep. I, um, amazing chicken, by the way. It was so good. My Brazilian mama. Yeah. Um, so we... We engaged in in just enjoying a Sabbath dinner with them. They uh, broke bread like legit Jewish challah bread, the braided con, and it was delicious. It was. It was so good. Yeah. They uh, they also uh, quoted uh, a prayer that that touched me about more than anything, 
And that was a, a prayer in Hebrew. Yeah, that Jesus prayed yeah. when he broke the bread yes. and, um, you know, shared the wine with his disciples, the, yeah. the Passover feast that they mm. had right before he was crucified. But it was also what Jesus prayed yeah. prior to distributing bread to the 5,000 yeah. or probably any time, I would think. I think it was yeah. a Jewish prayer that was used frequently when you were yeah. Serving and yeah, yeah, serving in that that capacity. So it was really special for us. So so we had this opportunity to go spend time with our our now Brazilian family, and we just did life with them, enjoyed Sabbath and delight with them, and then we left there and immediately drove to uh, an Indian fellowship of believers. Yeah, and which it, was really cool. It was so cool because we walked in and it smelled like India. Yeah, and my heart was so full because it like smelled like a piece of home to us. Yeah, and typically we wouldn't like plan so much in one night, but it was one of those like once in a lifetime. Our mm-hmm. our really good friend was going to be there, um, mm-hmm. and he's going back towards uh, his other home yeah, coming Appa. up this Tuesday. Yeah, Appa is going back home Tuesday, and so it was kind of like one of those last moments to kind of fellowship with him and mm-hmm. um and just to be with brothers and sisters that were from India. That was so special for us to be welcomed because we are very much so not Indian but our heart is for India yeah and like I I could tear up now thinking about being with those believers who just they're they're just trying to do Jesus stuff too and they're just trying to do life and and we had an opportunity to go just sit with them and spend time with them and how beautiful that was and all this this weekend kind of leads up to what this episode is all about and this episode is about community yeah i think we are just realizing how beautiful true like rich biblical community really is in various forms Mm. you know um so often i think we as believers think that like the gathering of the saints is just the sunday morning like gathering in the temple no. um and and it's so much more than that and really we were is. talking about friday night when we were finally on our way home just how full our hearts were and it was like ugh, like being with these two very different groups of families and people from very different cultures very different customs and even the gathering itself was very different um you know our, our indian family um singing worship mm-hmm. with no musical instruments no, um it was beautiful and it was beautiful and like just bringing in chairs into the living room and sharing life together and sharing a meal together and and learning where each other was from and what Mm -hmm. our experiences have been so those were two very different gatherings but we left so filled up like man it just feels right and then even saturday morning you know we've we've made it a habit to to do breakfast in somewhat of a community setting with some close friends of ours and that's so special to us yeah that's more of an like an intimate setting yeah that, that we do a very very small uh usually it's one family yeah that that we'll just try to do breakfast with yeah but it's beautiful Mm. and it's um there's so much life in it there really is and that's I mean, ultimately, that's kind of what Corey was sharing about. And it was so fitting that Corey was teaching that Thursday night at Ecclesia, which is a community gathering. It's so funny. He was like, I'm sharing about community in the community building with this community. (laughs) Yeah, it's so funny. Um, And it really was. It's perfect because we we find so much life in our Thursday night gatherings, too. It's just there's something about being around other believers. It's like the Holy Spirit inside of me and the Holy Spirit inside of you, like, is just like so drawn to each other. Mm. And I think you described it as kind of like when you've got, you know, this flame of a candle and this candle and like they're fine and they're lighting on their own. But when you put them together, it's just so much more, uh, it is. so, so much, much more brighter. Vibrant. Yeah. And so um, somebody, the, the one we call Appa, that's Tamil for um, father. Mm-hmm. And um, he's just such a wonderful man. He actually spoke this psalm over us, but it's so fitting because we keep saying there's so much life in it. But what does that actually mean when when you're trying to put it into context for somebody else? Yeah. Because, well, let, let's face it. We as Americans are not good at community. No. Like true, real, raw community. We're terrible at it. No. And it's just it just is what it is, but it's, it is not God's design. God's design is to be in community with people who you love and who love you 
to do life together. That's how he created us. Yeah. We don't even really do like family very well. We're mm-hmm. such an individualistic society that's just like, hey, go chase your dreams and you do you and mm-hmm. chase after what you want. And it's so very like selfish, honestly. Yeah. It's very self driven. Yeah. Um, and there are just things in God that you don't get to experience on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, our, our society's not good at it. And we even kind of talked about Thursday night, how there's this illusion of community and connection that is social media. Yeah. Because I can like, like get a glimpse it's into community. it's false community. I can get a glimpse into the lives of people that I went to high school with 20, 20 years ago. That hurts. That Ouch. Um, I can get a glimpse into their lives and think that I'm connected to them, but that is not authentic, real Mm-mm. community. No, it's not. But he spoke this this psalm over us, and and uh, he's South a he's South Asian, and he said. This is Psalm 133. It says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, and get this, this is the blessing, life forevermore. So when we say there's so much life in it, what we're actually describing with mortal words is there there is connection and spirit and love and things that are going to echo into eternity. Yeah. And that's so beautiful because it, it, this thing is a building block. It, it says how good and pleasant, so it's good and pleasant, for us as brothers and sisters in Christ to dwell in unity. And then it says it's precious, like the oil on the head of, of the priest, mm-hmm. Aaron. And oil represents... The Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit or anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. And so it, it talks about how it runs down Aaron, his beard, mm-hmm. which would have been the high priest, and ultimately his robes or the high priestly garment. Yeah. And there was only one high priestly garment. And then it goes on to say it's like the dew of Mount Hermon, which would be like a very vividly uh, like lush and vibrant, lush and, vibrant and, and greenery and just mm-hmm filled with life and, and river sods and it says which falls on the mountain of Zion for there the Lord has commanded the blessing so there's ultimately through unity and community it's funny how you get the word community mm-hmm. from unity but it's there's a blessing in it and it's life yeah well and it's ultimately what Jesus prayed for right like right yeah. before Jesus left the earth he prays for his disciples and then he prays for the church at large and he's like God would you just make them one mm-hmm. like you and I are one and I think that's one of the things that I have absolutely loved about um, our, our organization Faith Alive Ministries and having the opportunity to go into different churches and meet with different believers is like ultimately when you sit down with somebody and you start to share with them what you're doing in the, the scripture scriptural backing of it you're like everybody can get on board we're all on the same page Mm -hmm. like we're all on the same team and so there's just this beautiful unity and I love that I love getting to sit down with people who maybe don't worship the same way or maybe don't study scripture the same way but they love Jesus and they love his people and Mm -hmm. so it's like there's just something common you know so there's just this we're automatically family um, even if we're not the exact same Mm -hmm. there's like common spirit and side of us and i think that's exactly what jesus was praying for yeah that's exactly what he wants and when you you know it when you come across it like i'll never forget tim jones is a good friend of mine um when i when i worked um in pineville tim jones um i met him somebody introduced me to him that that person that introduced me was a believer tim jones is a believer and i'm a believer when i was introduced to tim Within 30 seconds, I knew he was a believer, and him and I were connected forever. Yeah. Like, and that's what the body is. Mm-hmm. You have this thing that's greater than a family. Yeah. It's a it's a oneness. Yeah. It's a spirit oneness. Yeah. And that's what's so so wonderful about community. Yeah, it's why we can sit down with a family from Brazil and we can sit down with a family yeah. from India and be like, hey, we're family. Yeah, it's all the same. Yeah. Yeah, travel traveled around the globe in one 
one uh, evening. Yep. I said, I wanted to read um, a couple of scriptures that just talk about, you know, unity and, and why it's important. Actually, this was in my reading today, so it's fitting, but it comes from Ecclesiastes chapter four. It says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their efforts. For if either falls, his companion can lift him up, but pity the one who falls without another to lift him up. Also, if two lie down together, they can keep warm. But how can one person alone keep warm? And if someone overpowers one person, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Um, so it's like it's it's just biblical, you know, that two are better than one, obviously. Mm. And and I think a lot of the people, uh, a lot of the people who kind of resist community, it's because they've been hurt by community, and that's so true. Like. Uh, often our wounds come from people, Mm -hmm. right? Where else would they come from? They're going to come from people. And as much as we want the church to be like the safe, perfect place, it's just a room full of broken people who Mm -hmm. need Jesus, you know? And so people are messy, Mm -hmm. but like we can't deny the fact that two are better than one, you know, that like if somebody comes in and attacks our house, I would much rather they have attacked the house when you're here as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here trying to fend somebody off on my own. It's mm-hmm. just kind of a common sense thing that two are better than one. I love how that passage, it, it talks about two the whole time until it gets to the rope. Mm-hmm. And it says a, a cord of three, three. strands is yeah. not easily broken. Yeah. And I think that's wild because like that, that whole is just talking about two people. Yeah. But then when it gets to the braid, it's like, no, you need three. That yeah. third one is the Holy spirit. And that's what weaves us together truly. And what, ultimately makes us not easily broken yeah and you talk about you know hurt and we'll we'll go into church hurt actually just a little bit it's it's like i we we expect christians to be um well perfect yeah we expect them to be a higher standard and there should be yeah there should be a higher standard maybe just not perfection yeah we expect people to to be uh perfect when they're treating us but really romans says the strong should carry the burdens of the weak that's romans 15 1 and what what i believe it's talking about is the one that has the revelation of of strength at the time they should carry the burdens of the weak so it's it's almost it's almost i don't i don't want to say ridiculous that that it's really it's a fallacy Mm -hmm. to believe that you can't be hurt by somebody yeah but when the hurt occurs what do you do? How do you, how do you heal? Yeah. And I think we see a lot of that come through Ecclesia. Yeah. That's our house church that, that's just kind of grown beyond our our walls in our home. So we call it Ecclesia now because it's not really a house church anymore. Um, but we've seen a lot of broken brokenness come through that have had church hurt. Yeah. And but how do you heal when when people hurt you? You. You get in community. Yeah. The very thing that hurts you is often the thing that you also need to redeem. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about this even within the context of marriage. Both of us went through very painful, difficult marriage situations that ultimately ended. And there are things that come up in our marriage and our relationship where we're like, wow, God's healing that in me through you. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even realize that there yep. are wounds that I didn't realize still needed to be healed. But he's using you in marriage to heal things that I was wounded by in marriage previously Mm. and it's no different with church hurt like we we get hurt by believers people let us down they disappoint us um there's even like abuse of spiritual power and authority like absolutely that stuff happens but the best way to heal from those things is actually to like put yourself out there again and get into a healthy community and let god use people to bring healing to those Mm. very wounds that's so good because ultimately uh the 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 people that hurt you are are truly i think it's dan moeller that says this like you you people people who don't know who they are hurt yeah. you if if somebody hurts you it's because they don't know who yes. they are in christ but if you are allowing yourself to hold on to that hurt it's because you don't know who you are in christ yes because and that sounds harsh but it's really not no, because it's not harsh. because if i'm a follower of jesus i've died to myself yeah and so somebody who does something against me hasn't actually done it to me they've done it to christ in me mm-hmm. and he refuses to take up offense so how yeah. much more should i be like nope i just got forgiveness locked and loaded and ready to go at all times yeah, it's because, not easy well and if we if 
if we truly have been born again, we no longer own ourselves. No. You don't own your thoughts. You don't own your money. You don't own your time, your relationships, anything. So can someone truly hurt you if they're coming against a believer or are they not coming against God's property? Right. And that's such a... That's hard. It's, it's hard to swallow. Yeah. It, it, it is, but it, but it's the truth at the same time. Like we, we can't dance around this this fact either that when we are hurt the only healing that can come is through people again and that that would challenge people that are hurt right now so oh, yeah. much and yeah. my heart is not not to to condemn it it never it never will be but at the same time i i can't i can't lie to someone either yeah and say that that's not that's not the case so why why else is community so important? You know, and I think one of the things that Corey brought up was um, he showed this video of like a lion cub or a lioness, whatever, being attacked by these hyenas, right? And like it looked like a hopeless situation mm-hmm. oh, in, it was. until these other lions come in and like and scatter the enemy. And he was just talking about how how that is the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, we should be fighting each other's battles. And so there have been times in my life when I couldn't pray and mm. I couldn't worship, but I knew that I needed to be with the body of Christ because I could sit at the altar and just weep. And it's like the the prayers and the worship of the people around me lifted me when I was incapable of doing it myself. Mm. Yes, you're absolutely right. Well, and, and there's there's different levels of community too. Right. Um, like I, we'll, we'll call it, I think he calls it the circle. Yeah. Well, well who's your circle? That's like, the three to five at most closest closest people in your life and then there's this like uh extended circle Mm -hmm. which would be um not community but it's like your village yeah like your village Mm -hmm. and and that would be um maybe 10 to 20 yeah 10 to 20 people maybe even i mean i think he says up to like 30 or 40 yeah that's that's why i think that that house church uh house churches and life groups if you go to yeah, church somewhere bible life studies. groups bible studies things like those are so valuable because that can actually start to activate your village outside of that is community and community is wonderful but but it's not it's not intimate Mm-mm. and it's and that's up to uh 150 people then then you might have subgroups like work and things like that yeah. but but truly the major, the vast majority of the growth in your life and the healing in your life take place in the circle and the village. Yeah, and Jesus even modeled that. Mm-hmm. You know, like Jesus had 12 disciples, kind of like this tribe or this mm-hmm. village that was around him. Um, there were like hundreds of disciples who followed him from town mm-hmm. to town and people who showed up and listened to him. Um, but then there was like this small handful of three that he took up on the mountain with him, mm-hmm. James, Peter, and John, right? Yeah, and I actually want to read that because it says, and after six days, this is in Matthew 17, It says, after six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the three. And he led them up high, uh, up up a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And I'm going to pause there. That's like cutting verse three halfway. But it's it's those three to five. It's that circle Mm -hmm. in Christ that you can see the transfiguration with in your own yeah. life it's when you when you witness jesus together in the most intimate way it's not just him that gets transfigured it, it's us yeah and that's where that intimate circle is where it occurs yeah yeah, and I, I think that's why it's like an important thing for all of us to kind of take inventory of like who am I letting in that inner circle. Mm-hmm. Um, what there's that saying. It's not even a, like a, a a Christian saying, but like mm-hmm. you become you're a product of the five people you are closest to. Yeah, and that's so true. So it really does make you kind of take an inventory of like who am I hanging around, and mm-hmm. am I hanging out with people that I want to be like? Um, that's something we challenge our kids in a lot because yeah, I'm like, yeah. hey, you you will become who you hang out around. So mm-hmm. choose wisely. You know, if you're, you're you're hanging around people who have a filthy mouth and are negative all the time and do nothing but complain and speak death. Well, like you, you have to be careful because that is what you'll become. You, your perception true. and what you fixate on is what you're going to gravitate towards. Mm-hmm. Well, and and that that's a that can be a bit scary. Like if 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 you're watching this and and you're you know the the ones that you're closest with and hanging out with are 
not modeling Jesus, yeah. then there's a very real uh, question you have to ask yourself. Do you want them more than you want Jesus? And ultimately, I, I pray the answer is no, because that will lead you to death if you continue down this road. But, but finding that group of people who are just going to chase Jesus with full steam ahead together, I, I don't know if I've ever experienced anything like this. Mm-mm. in my life the current the current relationships that we have our our circle um our village our community um they're just next away. level yeah. yeah well that's you know it's so funny we uh, a year or so ago you really you felt like you had heard this word from god that we were walking into a season of great wealth and then like the next year and a half have been not exactly what not that at all maybe not what we thought wealth was going to look like definitely not like material possessions and you know we've been surviving on miracles and so but the wealth has been in people yeah absolutely 100 percent in community um and i think that it's important to say that there's a place for all three of those um it's it's not enough just to have the the circle and just to have the tribe like you need to be a part of a a greater community Mm -hmm. and and that's something that i think even in our culture a lot of people have kind of gotten away from because of church hurt and Mm -hmm. just this like um there are people who who are like deconstructing their faith and they've become become disillusioned with the body of Christ and mm-hmm. so they like kind of throw the baby out with the bathwater you know and it's like you're you're missing out because Jesus, you know, we we model ecclesia after like the early church where we're breaking bread and, and opening the word of God and just trying to study the apostles' teachings and that's beautiful and it's mm. good. But they also were in the temple, which yeah. is like Sunday morning church. And yeah. so we are big advocates for all of it. I, yeah. I think that's just important for us to say is that we're not saying that we should forsake the assembling together. In fact, that was the other scripture I had marked. Um, it's in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, And let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging each other and all the more as you see the day approaching. Mm-hmm. And I think we can all agree that the day is approaching like the, the day of Jesus's return is approaching it, it absolutely is. Um, and so how much more important is it for us to be connected and one with the body of Christ in right. some way shape or form yeah I mean it, it, we're we're all but desperate for for Jesus in our nation you know yeah and and Jesus said in John 17 father make them one as you and I are one so that the world may know that you sent me yeah. And the body of Christ, whether you've been hurt, whether you've gone through things, whether whether you're the one hurting, I mean I, I don't I don't know. But the body of Christ is is God's plan A and he has no plan B. Yeah. It is in in every sense the how we love each other, how our how we are unified in community is how the world will know that Jesus was sent by the Lord. Yeah. By God. Well, and ultimately, that's what everybody's looking for, mm-hmm. right? Everybody is looking for love and connection, and they, yeah. they find all kinds of counterfeits for it. Mm-hmm. But how wonderful would it be if the body of Christ really just per- portrayed this deep love for each other and community mm-hmm. of like, hey, I'm going to bear your burdens with you. I'm going to fight your battles. I'm going to stand with you in prayer. I'm going to speak truth to you when you're facing lies and doubts. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm going to love you deeply. I'm going to walk through life with you. That's something that's irresistible to the world because it it's is. ultimately what they're all looking for. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. we, we all just need Jesus, and you get Jesus. The Word of God became flesh so that the Word of God could become flesh yep. and dwell among us. And so when we're just being a bunch of little Jesuses, that's how we draw people to Him. Yeah. That's how we heal. That's how we grow. Yeah. So thank you for uh, joining us. And um, I'll put some links in, in the description below. Um, however, if you're not plugged in with community, um, I would suggest at your church, I'm sure you guys have something. If you don't, this is your cue to start one. Yeah. Just start a quick Bible study, and, and we'll be doing a, a, another video on how to how to actually start a Bible study and what to do. And so be sure to uh, subscribe and follow this channel and um, hit that bell so that you'll know when, when the next video is coming out. Yeah. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Catch you next time.